Okay, I want to do a quick count if video. Let's go to screen three, share that bad boy. All right, so you can be trying to do this um, with your data here. We've got the data for the hospital study where people went in to get treatment for depression. And um, we're here in sheet four where we created a, a pivot table and we kind of went through those steps to create that. So another way to do what the pivot table does essentially is to just use count ifs. And I think that can be a useful tool in your toolbox. So start with the equals count if I'm going to go ahead and double click here. That's going to capitalize on letters and put the open parenthesis. It doesn't matter whether they're capitalized or not. It'll still recognize the formula. However, you type it upper lower case the spelling of course has to be correct at this point i'm ready to give the range but the range is in a different sheet so i'm going to click on data and then i'm going to highlight the data that i want to look at so i'm counting inside of this data set this column uh, for whether the word is prozac or zoloft or placebo so now i'm going to go um, back to sheet four That did not work. See how it switched this to sheet four. And also notice that it's up here too. If I go back to data. All right, that's what I want to do. So then I'm going to put a comma here. And then I'm ready to go to sheet four. At this point, it says sheet four here. It doesn't really need to say sheet four because by default, if I'm on sheet four and I make a cell reference, it'll look in sheet four. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it wants me to say that. Let's see if I can just take it off. Um, yeah, I think it'll work either way. Okay, so then I close the parenthesis, press enter, and I've got the number 37 there. So at this point, I can repeat the process equals count if open parenthesis, go to data, grab the data, and then comma, and then go back to my sheet. And I'm going to click on Zoloft this time. And again, I'm going to get rid of that. It doesn't really matter. I get rid of it, but it just makes me feel better. Okay. So the, the other thing I said in the instructions is you could use autofill, but to do autofill, you have to fix this. Um, I want to fix it to column B, going from B2 to B110. I don't think the dollar sign in front of the B is important. This one is not going to get fixed because when I go down one row, I want to look at placebo instead of Zoloft. So this number didn't change, but now I should be able to autofill. And just to check, the sum of those is 109. That's good. That's what it should be. And if I wanted to turn them per, to percentages like I did here, I would need to finish by dividing by 109. And then I would... So that I don't have to go back and redo that, I would probably use this middle formula and autofill. It's only three of them, so it's a pretty short fix for each one. Um, and then I would format these as percentages. So that's how you could do this process uh, with the pivot table, but um, using counts instead of the pivot table. So I wanted to show you both of those, give you a chance to practice both of those. Um, I guess I'll do the pivot table again, just for fun. Clicking on um, treatment and we're inserting a pivot table and selecting everything. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna bring in treatment this time. Oh, it's already there. And then the value I'm gonna add here and I'm do the counts and it adds up to 109. And that was the same data we had there. So if I change that to percentages, I should see the exact same percentages. Show values as percent of the grand total, 31.19%, 33.9. Oh, oh, because it switched the order on me. Did it in alphabetical order. Placebo, 31.2. Just add one more decimal place here. Well, here I'll take one away from here because I think it's silly to have two decimal places. Oop, wrong one. 
There we go. 31.2% for placebo. 31.2% for placebo. So again, there are two different ways to do it. I think both things have value. Just want to make sure you had both options on the table. 